that Justice League is not a dumpster fire of unimaginable proportions is a small miracle in and of itself. The film was mid-production when the reaction to Suicide Squad prompted massive reshoots and rewrites, then a personal tragedy made original director Zack Snyder leave and the reins were passed to Joss Whedon, who proceeded to spend $25 million on two months worth of reshoots. Couple that with the fact that the suits at the top of DC had decided that the only problem with Batman vs Superman Dawn of Migraines is that it was simply too long, and so an edict was handed down that Justice League could not pass the two hour mark under any circumstances, which it doesn't, by about 30 seconds. But that does mean sacrificing some relatively unimportant scenes such as, yeah, pretty much everything in the trailer. Also, this film has to introduce several new characters and locations, as well as drastically increase the size and scope of the DCEU. So whilst it isn't a complete dumpster fire, I'm still calling the fire brigade just in case. I mean, to begin with, Justice League plays like a three hour film cut down to two hours. Whilst it avoids massive plot holes, although there are a fair few small ones, there is quite a bit of people hopping around the world and beaming out of trouble. Although despite all of this, there's still about 15 minutes of redundant scenes. Did I need repeated visits to a group of civilians trapped in not Chernobyl? Did I need 10 minutes showing that Wonder Woman is badass? I know she's a badass because I saw her damn movie. Could you not have put that time towards developing Aquaman and the Flash or making a villain who doesn't make whoever the hell the villain was in Thor The Dark World look interesting, developed and threatening or showing the lanterns or Batman doing some detecting or a Black Canary cameo or any one of a multitude of scenes of character development or training it was filmed and then cut for no other reason than to cut the runtime. Yeah, Flash, Cyborg and Aquaman all get one personality trait each. One keeps falling over their own feet, one's a badass, and one hates what they've become. You can probably guess who is who. The villain, I can't remember his name at all, gets none. You could have replaced him with a pot plant with a frowny face glued to it and I doubt anyone would have noticed. The action is dull, repetitive, overlong, over-edited, chock full of CGI which range from the average to the simply shocking and none of the stunts look practical in any way, shape or form. None of the heroes seem to ever be in danger of getting their hair ruffled and to be honest it all got a bit boring and towards the end I was feeling bludgeoned and grateful for the reduced runtime. Oh and speaking of the CGI, a lot has been made of the fact that Cavill's moustache has been painted over but I didn't really notice it for several reasons. First, he's barely in the film. Second, there's so much computer trickery on the screen already that a little more isn't going to be noticed. And reason the third is that I was busy planning the violent deaths of the gurning baboons behind me who, when they weren't saying how lit the film was, were correctly guessing every other line of frankly appalling dialogue. One example that's in danger of sticking with me forever has Lane saying to a recently resurrected Space Jesus as pretty much her first, that's her first, line to him being that soon to be immortal line of dialogue, you smell good, to elicit the response, don't I always? How that line got written, approved, spoken by actual actors, and then not left on the editing floor baffles me. All right, what else? Affleck spends the entire film looking slightly more bored than everyone else, an impressive feat in and of itself, as if counting the days until the Flash movie reboots the DCEU and he can regenerate into Jake Gyllenhaal. And yes, I did notice that you put the classic Batman and Superman themes in there. Well done! No, 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 really, well done. Round of applause. Well done for reminding me of classic films that will stand the test of time and will be being watched long after this film and franchise have been long dead and buried, half of which should be achieved by this time next week. And if you've got a $300 million budget, which by the way pretty much ensures this film is either going to bomb or make a pitiful profit, since estimates for the total the film will have to gross worldwide just to break even range from $600 to $750 million, get the original version of Everybody Knows by Leonard Cohen instead of getting Sigrid, whoever the hell they are, to cover it. Standards. Am I at the time limit yet? I just want to forget this wretched thing exists. I mean, there were some things I liked. I chuckled at a few lines of dialogue, and um, nope, that's about it. I mean, I left the cinema being told by the light of my life that this Flash was better than the CWs, but to me it was as if Sheldon Cooper decided to become a superhero and was even more unfunny than usual. I am sure that somewhere out there is the three-hour Snyder Cut, but I'll pass on it, as I severely wish I could have done on this. This film feels like it has no heart, has no real plot or interesting characters, and instead it's just boring, tension-free fight scene followed by linking scene followed by boring tension free fight scene. This film needed to be longer, to allow us to get to know its many new and returning characters, to grow its world and to allow us to take a breath every once in a while. But after all of this I think this film just needs to be the end of the DCEU. Forget what I said at the top of the review, this is a raging dumpster fire of a film. A raging burning inferno of 300 million dollars and I didn't even get to the fact that the plot is basically the first Avengers film with a few minor tweaks but I need to go and lie down and calm down 
then I'm going to look for and find the person who looked at Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon and decided that there was some overlap there and find out exactly what they were on, because I bet it was some good stuff. This film is fire. Do not watch this film under any circumstances. I'm not including the inevitable three hour Zack Snyder cut in this review because I haven't seen it, but I'm sure that that will only go up to skip it. But what did you guys think? But what did you guys think, and which superhero would you most like to see on the big screen who has not already made the leap? Comment below, let me know. I'm Daniel, this has been a dunking. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.